Um, firstly, you know, it's it's been a hugely um, profitable collaboration from my point of view, working with Elemental. Um, this has taken us hopefully to a new arena again, uh, but I think all the programmes who were who signed up and are working are really impressed um, with, with the partnerships that we forged and how things are going. Um, but in terms of this sort of bow tie uh, depiction of social prescribing, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and we think there are basically three stages. There's the, the referral point, the red box, into that social prescribing process, and then into sort of uh, passing on to all those uh, organisations who are able to lend their support. Where today I think sits in the big picture is it's about that second to the third element of, of the process. We focus an awful lot on how do we get people in. Um, my role within the health board has certainly been around um, growing that social prescribing process and trying to make it more robust, but appreciating that the fact that unless we have a very robust third sector in particular, the whole thing will collapse. So in just in terms of, of context, um, I think we have made excellent progress so far. Um, and what we have in North Wales, uh, I often ask colleagues in Elemental, where does this sit alongside other, other parts of, of, of the UK? Uh, and they tell me it's impressive, so I, I will believe them. Um, obviously, later on today, we will agree the next steps based on what people have heard and what people feel they can contribute. Um, I do think we need to face the challenge of funding. Uh, I'm not aware of, of any single social prescribing programme that has core funding, and I'm e equally acutely aware of the financial problems that the third sector faces. Um, and for that, I think we do need to focus on that whole pathway, and today hopefully brings the whole thing into perspective and gives us all a uh, better appreciation of that. Um, and social prescribing needs to be open to all. It is not a closed shop. And again, that's one of the key messages from today and why I was so delighted that over 100 people registered for this event. So just in terms of what we have in North Wales, um, so you mentioned we have eight programmes signed up. So we have seven plus Glyndwr University. Um, so the, the information here is basically taken from what Elemental is telling us. This is not the totality of all social prescribing in North Wales. This is just what those seven programmes are able to share. But immediately you can start to see the breadth of, um, of activity and the fact that through our links with Elemental and what that software is, is, is giving us, we're starting to understand what that picture looks like and we're able to compare and contrast. Not that it's a competition, but we're able to learn from each other as well. OK, Jennifer. Um, and so the seven programmes or the eight programmes are listed there. Um, I was keen to make sure that we had something listed and linked to each of our local authority areas. So you can see Anglesey and Gwynedd, Comwyn, Denbyshire, Flinch and Wrexham are all represented there. Good day, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer Neff. I'm um, the co-founder of Elemental and CEO. And I'm just here because I wanted to kind of give a quick overview for some of you who may may not know what Elemental is and what we do um, and why it's relevant. So we, Leanne Monk and I, we were community development workers. And I think that's really, really important in this because we have a, it's a tech for good company. It's essentially technology um, that we create. But it comes from a place that of understanding because Leanne and I worked in the community voluntary sector in some of the most socially deprived parts of Northern Ireland for 15 years. And in that time, we there were just so many challenges around um, community health and well-being. And, you know, we were just really, really frustrated and really getting, you know, angry about, you know, just the silo working and the fact that people were getting left behind. And the fact, I suppose, that all our great work in the community and voluntary sector, it wasn't really truly getting recognised and rewarded the way that it should. So, you know, I popped up some of the big uh, strategies here and some of the big reports. And, you know, it's I know it's difficult writing those strategies, but it's even more difficult to deliver on them. Um, and sometimes the way that funding is, is, is designed, you know, you find yourself spending more time on doing the evaluation 
than actually helping the people that you're supposed to be helping and supporting them and empower them. So Leanne and I said, look, let's see if we can do something about this. So we, we thought about digital. Now, we didn't have a technical background at all, um, but we thought digital has to play a part in this. It has to have some kind of role to make things easier. So we, we kind of spent two years talking about it and, and getting big flip chart pages and kind of mapping out what a person's journey is at the moment and how all the places that they can drop through the cracks. And then we looked at mapping out a journey that maybe would have more focus on that person, um, more ability to think about the different touch points in that person's life. So not everyone goes to the GP all the time. They might go to their pharmacist. Um, people might open up to their hairdresser or their barber when they're chatting to them. It might be a social worker that, that plays an important role in someone's lives. So we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if they all had the ability to make a referral for someone um, through to someone who has the time and the experience and the local knowledge to help that person navigate through all the things that are out there because there are so many i don't know if, like with you guys but in dairy there are so many things that you can do now um to improve your health and well-being but the challenge is a lot of people say i didn't know about that and then you have other people who say i did know about that but i didn't think it was for someone like me so there's a lot to be done there in terms and this is where social prescribing comes in it provides that kind of infrastructure for the social prescribing link worker who has the time who has the ability and the local knowledge and the skills to be able to help people yeah. So there's a core platform that everybody in, in North Wales is using and lots of other regions. Um, and that's a, a platform that's responsive. So people can use it on their laptops or their iPads or their tablets. Um, and they receive referrals on that. They can manage their caseloads and then they can bring providers on board and they can run reports. There's a connector plus, which we call it's a two way integration between the GP systems and Elemental, because when we spoke to GPs and multidisciplinary teams, they said, look, we're not going to log into our system and then log out to go into yours. We need a seamless connection. So that's something that we're really excited about. And it's just happening now in, in North Wales, where all the GPs are going to have access to Elemental to make a referral. And then it pushes some codes back into the GP system so that they can report really easily on social prescribing. There's a self refer little module that we developed as well, just as COVID was starting, because not everyone should have to go to their GP to get a referral to social prescribing. We wanted people to be able to self refer into the link workers, into their team. So that's happening as well. And then there's a number of reports and things that, that the guys will show you when they're doing their presentations. Ultimately, we wanted to, Leanne and I wanted to kind of help measure, help scale um, the uptake and the impact of community health and well-being um, and social prescribing. So within it, the reports, you can see the impact on the patient, so you can see, or the impact on the person. So that by them engaging in social prescribing, has their anxiety levels reduced, has their well-being increased as a result of the support they're getting and show that journey. And you can choose different cohorts of people to be able to focus on. So it could be people with long-term conditions, it could be young people, it could be families. Um, then what's the impact on the community? And this is the, one of the really important bits. So, you know, you can track the number of referrals and what the most common reasons for referral are. So commissioners are, are really liking this because they're able to say, look, in this particular neighbourhood, there's a real issue around social isolation and loneliness. Are there enough services? Are there enough programmes and activities available to be able to combat that? All of those issues that we'd kind of... Uh, that had cropped up um, and going back to our basics with a kind of single point of access vision so that we would generate our support through interventions and download our report on one system covering all the data and the and the sharing protocols about information and allowing us to identify the pattern in referrals targeting the services and activities to the areas really that needed it next slide please jennifer um so this this is what we kind of you know we looked at pre-elemental um a recap was that the original vision really was that we had a limited number of referral agents um and that those referrals would come to us to link uh, link mon community link by email or phone and that that would be triaged by a, a community link officer who would then sort of have a what matters conversation and, and look at whether somebody needed one-to-one -one support from our local asset coordinator so initially what we did was we created a simple Excel database with all our core data and our reasons for referral, our actions, and the LACs used a wellbeing questionnaire as an assessment and kept sort of electronic case files. But all these were stored separately on different computers and um, what we found was really that in order to kind of pull them all together 
um, it, it took a lot of time. So it was fine when we had the project that was new and the number of lacs grew into a team and then our referral started growing and then we, we kind of getting more and more referral agents on board because they began to see how effective the interventions were. The way of re reporting and receiving referrals came quite difficult um, but as a major partner, the GP cluster felt that they needed a simple way to refer. So as Jennifer said, they didn't want to go out of their own prescribing system onto a, a, a website platform where they then have to go make a separate referral. Um, so um, what we wanted to do really was to bring all our referrals into a single point of access because on the next slide, Jennifer, our referral started to look a bit like this. Um, <laughs> with a standard referral of maybe kind of 200 a year, um, that that was okay to manage. But what we found was as the kind of relationships grew between the referral agents and the local asset coordinators, they tend to bypass link and they were emailing the referrals that we had coming in. We really needed a system that would, would be able to help us pull everything together. And back to that, that point, really, what Jennifer and the team have done really well for us as to be able to offer that programme where it, it's such an easy process to come in as a referrer, um, but also that you get all the information out on the other side. And that's the last slide, I think, Jennifer. Yeah, so um, the the main focus for us took us right back to where we started our project from, um, is that we only ever set up the, the, the social prescribing project to introduce joint working, to take the streamlined and the simple approach, but to give better outcomes for the individual. So when a referrer goes onto the system, obviously what they can see is, you know, the, the general kind of outcomes for people. But in be able, being able to have that conversation by looking at the ONS4 and the SWEM webs and the joined up approach between the green prescribing and the social prescribing, um, what we provide is that overall picture for the person. And it, it does go back to um, how, how far we're taking people away from frontline services and how far that individual is responsible for kind of connecting back to their own community. And our vision really is, like Lynn said in the beginning, is that everybody uses this joined up approach to future look at commissioning of, of social prescribing and how that practice really is one that makes such an impact on, on the community level that frees up all the resources at the top level of, of statutory services. So I hope that's given a, a, a quick overview of, of how we've brought our referrers in. Um, but yeah. That we've been able to use and we currently use the ONS4. So looking at personal wellbeing, so the impacts on happiness, worthwhile, life satisfaction and anxiety. And as everybody will know, if you are living in a cold, damp home, the impact on your health and wellbeing, your anxiety levels um, is going to be, um, you know, sort of dramatically impacted by that. So if we are able to demonstrate not just the impact of being able to get people out of debt and to make their homes warmer, we can also demonstrate reductions in their anxiety levels and improvements in their worthwhile and happiness. So what do we do from a warm rails point of view and from this project with regards to Elemental and also where do providers then come in? So looking at it from a support point of view and what we're trying to do with um, the project that we deliver through Warm Wales, if we move on to the next slide, please. So you'll see Healthy Homes, Healthy People. Lots of people have probably heard of Healthy Homes, Healthy People. And as I said, it all starts with the home. And what we're trying to do is to improve people's health outcomes by tackling the root causes. So you'll see on the screen, we've got the home. And obviously the impact can get worse and worse and worse and worse if we don't actually deal with what's going on with the home. And as I said, there's lots of different things that we um, provide um, lots of different interventions with regards to being able to tackle those root causes. So if we move on to the next slide. So what we're trying to do and what we're trying to expand on is trying to expand on the Healthy Homes, Healthy People model, which is looking at three main elements, home safety, income maximisation and affordable warmth. And now with the opportunity of bringing the health and wellbeing element through um, via Elemental, we've got an enhanced model. So that's bringing in health and wellbeing and also basic needs with the mission to tackle fuel poverty, improve health and wellbeing and reduce avoidable health inequality. And that is where the providers come in, because currently we, Warm Wales, 
are also the providers because lots of the referrals that we make, lots of the interventions that we make look specifically at um, fuel debt. It looks at switching. It looks at referrals to the priority services register. It looks at water support. So being able to get these providers on board is not something that we can do because they're big multi-million pound companies that we couldn't get direct referrals through to E.ON, for example. Example. But what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to expand on the health and well-being element side of it to get more providers to come on board from our health and well-being side. So when we just to put another word, um, obviously from link workers, um, navigators, we have community workers. Um, just to add another name to the frame, but obviously with the support that we provide we don't just do social prescribing. Obviously, we look at the bigger picture, we take a holistic approach, and it's about the home first. So that's what we're looking at. And then we then look at the health and wellbeing element. And what we want to be able to do with our project now, and hopefully with them, you know, as in providers listening, is to be able to expand our provider pool from a health and wellbeing side. So once we've carried out all of the support, we've looked at um, people's energy bills, made sure that there's savings there, we've maximised their income, we've made sure that their home is safe, it's warm, it's secure. We then want to be able to look at the health and wellbeing side. Are there organisations out there that we can do referrals through to either directly, so you can use the platform, or that you can receive an email, so how Jennifer explained before so that we can then provide additional support um, through to um, the residents that we are supporting. Um, through using Elemental, um, we've currently got, I think, or have support. I suppose Elemental are the glue that can help us all gel together here. So I think that the more we keep the dialogue going, the more people can link with their local programmes, the more people can link with those of us who are coordinating, uh, the more we'll, we'll gain that better understanding. So. Um, thanks to Elemental for putting it all together. Um, thanks to Lindsay and Joe in particular for their presentations, and thanks to everyone for your contributions. I don't think I've I don't, don't think I've been in the teams meeting, and I've been in a lot of the last twelve months where I've seen the the chat box so busy. So that's a good sign as well. Um, so just from me, thanks to everyone for their participation.